You're listening to the Inside Commerce podcast hosted by experienced consultants James Gerd and Paul Rogers. Inside Commerce is your fast track to digital knowledge, featuring interviews with leading e-commerce retailers, industry thought leaders, and the C-suite of key tech companies to explore the latest in digital strategy, customer experience, and tech. Discover what the latest trends really mean and get practical advice based on experience to help fine tune your e-com strategy and tech stack. Follow us on LinkedIn and reach out to James or Paul if you'd like to discuss an e-commerce project. We hope you enjoy the latest episode. This is the first in our new mini series where every quarter we sit down with the leadership teams at key e-commerce platforms to bring you the inside track on what they've been up to, key releases, new launches, and also what their strategy and roadmap focus will be for the um, next quarter. This quarter, we are interviewing Big Commerce, Centra, Commerce Slayer, Scale, and Shopify. We hope you enjoy these insights. Okay, well, let's start with our, our first vendor. It's Open SaaS leader, Big Commerce, recognized as a strong performer in both B2C and B2B by Forrester and also other industry reports, Gardner, etc. And today we're joined by Mark Adams, who's Senior VP and GM for EMEA. Um, hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, right, James. I'm really good, thank you. I'm in sunny Paris at the moment, so life is a lot better than it is in England. Yeah. Yes, and you're moving towards Still. Spain as well, aren't you, this week, so you'll get even warmer than us. Yeah, indeed. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, look, thanks for taking the time to join us. So we're going to do our, our three-question format, so let's let's get cracking. The first one is, what are the major new features and improvements that, that, that BC has released in the last quarter? You know, what's the relevance to merchants? Yes. Yeah, so, um, as we've spoken to you before, James, we've, um, we've been rolling out our multi storefront capabilities really for the last few years. It's culminated in a, in a big, um, general availability release in January of this year of, of our full multi storefront solution. So, you know, the full on localization of products, content, uh, storefront settings to allow the full localization of, of different storefronts and different geos for different brands. Um, yeah, we baited that from round about September, had great feedback from customers and partners, and, um, that's gone full GA. Um, we also, uh, have released the fully localized checkout for each storefront. So, you know, the selection of unique payments, shipping options, tax zones for local taxation across different countries and geos and currencies. Um, and we've released multi storefront for our B2B edition. That's in beta, uh, just gone into beta this quarter. So similar types of, you know, multi capabilities for our B2B customers. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're really getting there now with that multi storefront component. I think we're kind of almost to the end of the, that life cycle on, on that functionality. Um, the other really exciting things. Uh, that we've just released. The first is Catalyst. Catalyst is Big Commerce's new next generation storefront technology. Uh, we believe this will set a precedent for how brands and retailers can design and build, in particular, headless storefronts um, with a faster time to market, more out of the box functionality, more developer tools and documentation, allowing our developer community to really customize um, and extend that storefront technology. This is based on Next.js, uh, a React framework. So it's super modern technology, easy to use, and, and is probably the, one of the most popular front end technologies now on the market. And this is going to, this is going to really allow our customers to, to build, you know, beautifully designed and, and highly customized and extendable, uh, front end, um, uh, solutions. Excellent. Um, the other. Yeah, the other, the, the final one is worth mentioning is our, our B2B edition invoice portal. So we've just launched a, it's a business interface for our B2B suppliers, manufacturers and distributors, uh, allowing the modernization of invoice, the invoice process, which is, you know, the feedback we got, one of the most difficult things to manage, time consuming. Um, we've customized those workflows and the functionality to allow for seamless, you know, searching, managing and paying of invoices. Excellent. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the B2B capabilities. I've got a client in the US um, at the moment going on to BC. So uh, let's move on to question two then. This is a bit people love to hear about is big new wins or key launches that you can tell us about. Yeah, I'll start with new wins in the last kind of quarter or so. We signed uh, a customer called Recharge. Recharge are one of the largest global providers of gift cards and mobile top-ups. Um, round about 750 million in online sales growing really quickly and now 
internationalizing all across the globe, particularly in, uh, down in APAC and, and in North America. Uh, so this, this is really one of our, our biggest clients now in Europe. And we signed them out of the Netherlands, actually, our biggest ever deal in the, in the, in the Netherlands. And they will start going live actually within the next um, 30, 40 days. So it's a really quick iteration and, 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 a, and a global rollout, which starts, um, yeah, just in a, in a month's time. Uh, the other notable win was Anderton's. Anderton's Music is the second largest music retailer here in the UK. Uh, they're coming off uh, HCL Commerce, the old IBM product, uh, and are launching a new uh, composable uh, storefront capability on on Big Commerce and, and some other vendors. Uh, we also signed Senkaban, one of the biggest B two B manufacturers in the world. Uh, that's really exciting because of the potential scope for for, for landing and expanding into many of the Senkaban brands globally. Uh, and the other really cool one is. Um, a fashion footwear retailer uh, out of Stockholm, Sweden, called Sneakers and Stuff, and I was there last week with the CEO and checking in on how that project was going. So that was a another nice uh, new customer for us. Uh, in terms of go lives, um, in the last kind of couple of months, we launched last week Noble Panacea, the beauty brand, Kufra uh, out of Seat uh, down in Spain, Chantel. The lingerie, the French lingerie brand, uh, Mizuno, uh, the um, um, the sports uh, manufacturer, Best Way across Europe, we launched and rolled out, which is you'll probably know them from the you know they're a plastics manufacturer that specialise in swimming pools and um, hot tubs and all that kind of stuff, and also Muji um, went live with us um, across Europe uh, earlier uh, last week. Uh, Harvey Nichols earlier in the quarter, Sports Shoes actually on Monday went live with their UK store. And um, one of our biggest B2B manufacturers in Italy, Elix Italia, it's a 4 billion euro firm, own lots of um, consumer electronic, B2B electronic brands, um, have started rolling out now um, some of their brands and are beginning to push those, those live. So that's really exciting for that customer as well. Oh, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice range of industries as well. I didn't realise about Noble Palace here because I know the new digital director there. So uh, excellent. Uh, yeah, really nice brand to have. Um, and let's let's go to forward forward look it now. Um, the next thing that's always on people's minds um, listening to this podcast is what's your strategic roadmap focus for the next quarter? What can people expect to see come in or or be started? Yeah. Um, so I, I will talk to just kind of finishing off our multi. We are going to be implementing. Uh, uh, later in Q2, the, the full localization tax inclusive and exclusive on a storefront. Um, at the moment, a, a customer would have to have a separate storefront if they wanted to decide whether to use you know, inclusive or exclusive tax rules. Uh, we'll be solving that particular use case uh, later in uh, next quarter. Uh, we're launching our new um, composable buyer portal. This is the business user interface for our B2B customers to manage products, customers, um, uh, all of the all of, all of the settings, the the orders, etc. And this is, again is built on a Next.js front end technology. We're going to be open sourcing uh, this 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 front end to allow our, our, our development partners and customers uh, to create a library of components that can be shared, uh, thereby extending you know our reach in terms of the new features and functions that we can develop. Uh, so it's not all having to be done by by big commerce themselves. Uh, we're also launching AI powered product recommendations, uh, and most exciting, possibly for for for, for many of our customers, is uh, we acquired a uh, page editing uh, technology, page building content technology called Make Swift in November of last year. It's a dynamic uh, visual editor, uh, again built on Next.js, and we're going to be integrating uh, that new. Um, technology solution with our catalyst solution. So not only can we build, you know, the customized experience on the front end, we can have the business users manage in a highly intuitive um, tool to, to kind of manage content uh, as well. So uh, ultimately, you know, Make Swift um, will become, you know, the paid editing tool in, in, in our core technology. Um, and in the first iteration, it's going to be available for composable and headless builds mm. alongside catalyst. Yeah, I'm re I'm really looking forward to when that is in the core because the these the challenges people have when they want to do like more advanced workflow and publishing stuff and how that will solve it. I'm very much looking forward to that. So 
keep everyone keep your ears peeled on, on further announcements. But um, that's really useful. Thanks. We covered some really interesting stuff. If anyone wants to drill deeper into this, um, how do they reach out and contact either you or BigCommerce? Well, reach out to me at mark.adams at bigcommerce.com uh, or via LinkedIn. Um, that you know anybody who wants to reach out, I'm happy to take direct calls and then field them to the to the correct person, James. Magic. Well, no, thanks for taking the time. Enjoy your your tour around uh, Southern Europe, and um, look forward to the next update from Big Commerce. Cool. And now it's time to chat to Centra. So this is a, a, a vendor that's uh, been really, really strong in Scandinavian Europe for quite a long time, and is really making headway in the UK market, which is exciting. And uh, today we're joined by co-founder Martin Jensen. Hi, Martin. How are you? Hey, uh, I'm excellent. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'll give that. Thanks for joining us. Always enjoy chatting to you and the Centra team. So let's crack on with the questions then. Um, so the first thing that our listeners want to hear about is what are the major new features or improvements that you guys have dropped uh, in the last quarter that will be of interest to merchants? Cool. I think we are continuously releasing new features, of course, but a few things that maybe are worth mentioning, maybe the listeners are interested in is We've released quite a lot of updates to our omni-channel omni fulfillment logic. And what we mean by that is the actual rule engine that decides when we're going to do a ship from store or a click and collect order and so on. And it uh, might sound like a small thing, but, but we really work with a lot of brands that towards the end of the seasons of their collections, they are struggling because they are out of stock online, but they're um, individual stock pieces available in different stores. And now we release new functionality to really make all of that inventory available online to make sure we sell out, um, you know, reducing the, the errors when something is in stock somewhere, but not online. Um, so that's been one big improvement that, um, that we're rolling out now. Um, another thing we're improving is the promotions. So Centra has a sort of if this, then that type of promotion engine where you can really configure any type of discount you want to have. And the reason we have that is because we work with a lot of brands and, and you know, you don't want to cheapen the look of the brand too much. So you want to work with some more clever, maybe targeted discounts, bundles, um, you know, buy one, get to buy one at the discounted type um, price type of strategy. So what we're ruling out now is some new rules there that really uh, make it very easy to make a promotion across a category, but excluding items that are anyhow selling through really well. Um, so that's a big improvement that I think a lot of our uh, clients will appreciate. Um, third thing that is worth mentioning, I think, is we're improving the uh, uh, pre-order stock model for our B2B customers. So we work with a lot of brands that have not only a, a normal online store, but also a B2B online store for selling wholesale to um, to retailers buying in bulk. And what we've done now is really we've improved the way we uh, integrate with the supply chain systems. So we have a much better stock view on exactly what is coming in and when is it coming in. And we're able to present that in a new way to the B2B buyers. It's really easy to understand, uh, to place pre-orders essentially and understand what stock is coming in uh, when is it coming in? Uh, what can I order? And if I order, when can I get it? So I think those those are probably the three biggest things. Um, also, a bunch of smaller improvements, everything from a better barcode scanner uh, for sales reps that are helping buyers, B2B buyers, place their own orders uh, to uh, to better login page and uh, the ability to sort and arrange your own menu in Centra. So a lot of smaller improvements as well. Yeah, I really like the order management stuff because actually it's, uh, me and Paul talk about it. So we've seen a lot more focus from last year into this year around the whole stock availability and order management. So really interesting things. And let's talk about um, big new wins because I think this is definitely of interest for people who don't know you guys as well in your like heartlands, but especially in the UK, you've, you've had a lot of traction in the last like, six, 12 months. So let's talk about big new wins, key launches. Who are the, who are the key yeah. marquee brands that are exciting people? I, I think the most the most interesting goal lives I think uh, I think we're having right now I think certainly in the UK Paul Smith a brand I like a lot myself um, we're going live with Luca Faloni uh, which is which is a br British brand even though I think it's like a British brand with an Italian 
heart maybe, but uh, but still a, a UK brand. Uh, we won Ellis Brigham, uh, not live yet, coming so soon. Uh, we won in Denmark Samsa Samsa, also a brand I'm quite excited about myself. Um, and I think a bunch bunch of other big wins that we're not ready to announce yet, but um, uh, stay tuned for more. Yeah, interesting. Uh, it's, it's been an exciting time, so we will definitely stay tuned and look forward to the news. Um, and then the final question for you, and this is what people really love to hear about, is where are you, where's Centra headed? So for the next quarter, like, what's the strategic roadmap focus? You talked about omni-channel, order management. Where are you headed next? Yeah. So, so we have a bunch of big themes that we work on, you know, on a long-term horizon, in, including advanced analytics, machine learning, AI, including sustainability and product traceability and a few other subjects. Um, what, what we're really going to release next quarter, um, are a few different things. We're releasing a bunch of improvements to our checkout experience. So, uh, as you may know, we, we have a, our approach to the checkout is complete. It's completely customizable, so you can have any UX you want, but you can also have different PSPs and, and offer a bespoke checkout experience. Um, routing, for example, you know, payments to the best P PSP for different markets and so on and so forth. We're releasing a bunch of improvements there. I think the most fun one is probably uh, post-checkout uh, checkout cross-sell uh, for payment methods that support, selected payment methods that support that. Uh, it's something we've had in beta for some time, and now we're releasing it publicly. Um, so I think that's that's uh, interesting. Um, I think for our customers selling B two B wholesale and using Clavio, they will be excited to know that we're releasing major improvements to the integration with Clavio. So we now support wholesale much better. And in wholesale, of course, if you sell B two B, then then you might have, you know, there might be multiple different stakeholders that you get emails. Uh, involved on the buying side and so on. So I think our customers using Clavio and B2B will be excited about that. Um, other things on the roadmap is another theme that we're continuously investing in is always cross-border selling and international commerce, making that as easy as possible and making it really easy and operationally efficiently or to, to uh, sell to multiple markets and to scale to multiple markets quickly and we're doing improvements there as well in how we manage the different legal entities in different countries and so on to make that really easy excellent thank you very much there's some yeah some some chunky areas to to um, focus on as well international is never a small part of e-commerce so right. um and if if anyone listening is uh has got got their interest peaked by any of those areas and wants to speak to somebody at centra to drill into more about exactly how this works and how it's relevant to them how can they reach out? Who do they reach out to? Uh, they can they can go to our website and we have a contact form there. And if they want to get in touch with me, they can email me martin at centra.com. There you go. Hotline straight to Martin if you want to find out more about how Centra can, can help your business. Martin, always a pleasure to, to hear from you. Um, and I look forward to, to doing this on a regular basis. Likewise. Excellent. So let's move on to Commerce Layer now. Um, it's our third vendor we're profiling today. API first headless e-commerce engine that's been landing some major names recently. It's got a really cool brand portfolio, including Rafa. And um, today we're joined by Seth Bindenagel, who's the VP of Marketing. Warm welcome, Seth. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, James. Great to be here. And thanks for adding us in. Yeah, really appreciate you taking time. I know everyone's busy, but it's really good for us to get people to understand the updates direct from the vendors, not just from me and Paul. So let's crack on with the questions. So the yep. first question is, like, what major new features and improvements have you released in the last quarter? You know, what's the relevance and impact for merchants? Yeah, we, we've really done a lot in the um, order management space. I could probably say that's our number one thing. And it obviously has a, a major impact on how um, our merchant uh, customers are running their business. So specifically for, for our OMS, um, we think we've added a bunch of features that probably make it as best in class as any of our competitors. Um, that includes um, individual apps like the orders app, returns app, uh, we have a stock transfer app, a customer's app, um, but those are all kind of self-explanatory. Um, we've also updated the ability to edit orders after they've been placed. Um, and then most importantly, we've added this thing called custom apps, which is probably the most interesting. So. Any of the individual apps that comprise the OMS, we open source, we host the code on our GitHub page, and any any of our brand uh, customers, anyone can 
fork that code and customize it to solve for unique use cases internally. We know everything we build has a general use case in mind, but there's going to be custom use cases. So custom apps, every single piece of our OMS is customizable. Um, so the OMS has been great, a lot of high impact. Um, we've launched a provisioning API and our authentication API, separate from the OMS, but high related to that um, custom apps idea. The pro- provisioning API allows IT admins to do what it says, provision roles and, and permissions for their large group of uh, members, staff people and teammates who are using our apps. Um, and then lastly, I think we've done some great stuff to enhance our cart and checkout experience. Uh, we launched asynchronous order placement, which allows people to do what, what you think it does. I mean, some of the largest retailers in the world do this, Apple, Amazon, where an order can go through even if something along the way fails and you get a chance to kind of take care of that along the way. Um, you can split orders by line items inside the cart during checkout in some granular things, but still important. And then I'd say just kind of a, a top level one that everyone wants anyway, we've added further functionality for Apple Pay and Google Pay um, to our cart component. So lots of stuff in there, staying true to our roots and then diving into some new powerful stuff with the OMS. Excellent. That was definitely an area of me and Paul to say the order management piece more and more interested in, in getting some efficiencies in there. So that's interesting to know that's one of the key areas of focus. So let's move on to the next bit. What are the big new wins, key new client launches from the last quarter? Yeah, the biggest wins that we can point to right now that are public uh, would be Armani. Um, we uh, won that deal against a number of our largest competitors to run their global e-commerce across all of their brands. So obviously a massive global enterprise, a household name um, in, the, in the luxury fashion space. Um, there's a really cool large retailer called Woolrich that a lot of people know about. Um, it had its beginnings as far back as 1830, um, where farm gear was being produced from a wool manufacturer, a guy named John Rich. It's now become a loved brand by skaters and farmers alike because of their production of flannel. Um, we also landed iFit, which many people may not know that brand name. Probably the largest direct competitor to Peloton. They own the brand Nordic Track. They sell into the enterprise and directly to consumers, exercise gear, not a track, et cetera. Um, and then lastly, Jamie Oliver. Uh, we signed Jamie Oliver to run all of his global e-commerce, um, sort of taking the Jamie Oliver empire to the next level and chose Commerce Slayer. Um, key customer launches, um, smaller things that we'll mention. There's a company called Poto Brace. It's a current customer. They expanded into several new markets provide braces for people, uh, and go at your rehab, things like that. There's a, su- uh, a self-serve customer that we, we like to talk about called Ski Alper. They digitize their online skiing um, magazine, which is great. Um, there's a winery called City Winery that sells experiences in winery. They went live. An ed tech startup called Edulia Tricania went live. And then um, probably one of the coolest f- um, furniture um, design companies out of the Nordics called Fredericia went live. So a lot of cool brands going live, a um, lot of great new brands signing up. Excellent. Yeah, I'd interesting to see the diversity in the portfolio because it's not just yeah. centered in one area. So yeah, interesting. Thank you. Yeah, and a broad so diversity. Any- Thanks. Yeah. And anyone listening who wants to probe on more of these and find out exactly what the solution is, um, then obviously reach out off the back of the episode. Well, let's get to the final, final question for you, Seth. What's yeah. your strategic roadmap focus for the next quarter? You know, I, and in the back of some of those stories I just told, uh, we saw increasingly people using the Commerce API to build their own custom POS, point of sale. Um, so we're going to dive um, pretty heavily into building out a POS on, on Commerce Slayer, which is big news. It's a new news. Um, I think you guys are probably some of the first people we've said this to in a broad marketing conversation. Uh, we've talked a lot about it to our partners. They've requested it. Some, as I said, have already built it on top of the Commerce Layer API. So we're working with our current customers who are or have built a POS to kind of productize that, formalize it. So look look for a lot more coming out of it f- from us around the POS space. We think it's a true opportunity to unify offline and online commerce with our e-commerce API and a POS solution um, should get pretty powerful. Um, and then just some other quick stuff. We, we're definitely going to add some more B2B functionality, including customer tiers, requests for quotation, some other clever stuff that'll make our B2B offering much more um, first class. Um, we're launching a promotions app and then a new pricing um, engine, the new promotion rules engine, some cool price scheduling stuff. So 
little tiny features that are going to be really cool for people who are building right now. And then some really big ticket strategic items that'll steer the, co- the company into uh, really cool new directions. Amazing. This is why we love doing this podcast and having great guests like you because we get these little snippets that are really useful for people to understand the big strategic direction plus the platform centric stuff. So yeah, thank you. And um, if anyone, if anyone listening wants to get in touch with you off the back of this, we'll put the link, the LinkedIn, um, yeah, also be on the website. How can they reach out? Because there might be some questions on that. Obviously, LinkedIn uh, directly to us. Um, that'll go to me and a couple others who manage the LinkedIn account. You can you can email me directly. It's Seth S E T H at CommerceLayer dot I O. You can email me directly, and I can route that to anyone. And then, of course, our website CommerceLayer dot I O has all the obvious ways to always get in touch but anyone anyone can reach out if they want to magic um always a pleasure thanks for taking the time seth uh, and we'll we'll be keeping this going every quarter so we'll look forward to getting you back in uh, in a few months time yeah it was a pleasure james thanks for the invite we really were uh, glad to be here and we'll be back hi i'm thomas director growth at scale the world's fastest growing e-commerce platform has landed in the uk with global brands like Manchester United, Deichmann, Snipes, and Marco Polo trusting us to scale their commerce businesses. Are you ready for a new e-com experience? Talk to scale today, because life is just too short for painful commerce. Okay, on to our next vendor. Let's chat to scale. The text ta- uh, stack that I can't even speak that was spun out of a 5 billion plus e-commerce retailer about you. So there's real D- uh, DNA of a retail DNA in the business. It's not just a technology company. And today we're joined by UKI country manager, Craig Smith. How are you, Craig? I'm very well, thank you. It's been a very busy week. Just got back from Hamburg, um, so where where our head office is. But yeah, back back in London, and uh, I'm raring to go for get ready for next week. Excellent. No, well, thanks for joining us. And so, yeah, we're we're on we're on a quick fire round. This is a nice update summary for Q1 on scale. So let's get cracking on the first question, which is: Are one of the major new features or improvements uh, that have been released in the last quarter, or the key ones that you think are of interest to merchants? Sure. Yeah. There's there's kind of there's two really, and um, I'll I'll call out here. I think number number one is um, omni-channel. So we're we're a, we're a, we're a kind of integrated platform, and we 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 very much focused on on all of the use cases that are kind of end-to-end retailer, a bricks and mortar retailer, or pure play retailer. One one of the one of the areas that is in real demand at the moment is a fully integrated um, omni-channel capability set. So this this would be things like Endosal. So Colleagues being able to order on devices on the stock floor, um, click and collect, um, and returns management, but also fulfilling from store. So all the applications that 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 that, that um, deliver that capability. But again, for as you mentioned, so for enterprise clients, so these are these are being piloted with some of our large, you know, our large our large enterprise customers that have you no know, in in excess of three four thousand stores. So it's a, it's a, it's um it's very very excited by that because that opens up a, a, a kind of a lot more. A lot more kind of use cases that we can fulfill from the kind of the one integrated platform. Um, so that's the first one. Second one I'd say is um, what we've been very good at. Uh, so the about you business was very very good at kind of very advanced promotion. So this is this is being able to react to things like customer group. You know, is the customer profitable or not, and what's the right offer to put in from the customer based on certain criteria being met. When should they qualify for free gifts based on their basket or um, discounts tri- triggered by kind of a minimum order value. These kind of kind of criteria, but in a, but but offering it to customers in a very configurable way, so that um, and it's been a real key to success within the value business. We just we we kind of productize it such that all the, all customers can really get that the ability to really react to the individual customer and really tailor those promotions. So I'd say those are the two omni-channel and kind of advanced promotions out of the last last few months at scale. They're the two that I'm I'm personally most excited by. Yeah, excellent. It's interesting. Actually, a few vendors have been really focusing on advanced promotions, but I've definitely seen that the configurability that you guys have got is really quite sophisticated. So I recommend anyone listening to check it out. It is, is worth checking out. Um, let's move on to the next one then, which is big new wins or key launches. You want to talk us through a couple of those so people on some type of businesses that you're delivering solutions for? Yeah, so we, we're growing very fast. So we, I mean, we, according, according to Ghana, we're the fastest growing e commerce platform. So there's quite a lot of deals I could talk about. I won't talk about all of them. I'll talk about some that certainly I know this is, there's quite a lot of UK people on this, co- on, on these, um, on these podcasts. So I, I, I mentioned two UK ones and a couple of European ones. I think it's pretty best to, 
many people probably saw the announcement for Man United. We we, we signed Man United. We announced it in 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 January. What's different about that is it's more of a partnership. Um, um, we're helping them um, grow their they bring the bring their e-commerce business in house and and massively expand their kind of D to C business as a as a true partner. So not just the technology, but also um, the, the the kind of the expertise we have in our customer success teams and consulting teams. The other one um, people will be familiar. People will know Henry Lloyd is a Manchester-based brand, globally recognised. It's part of the Oddlo Group, so we we're very we're very big with kind of multi-brand. It's one of our kind of strengths. Is a business has got multiple brands trying to operate them off one platform. So Oddlo have chosen us because they are able to kind of operate off one stack, um, more than one brand. So Oddlo is a, a Swiss-based kind of performance apparel brand. Henry Lloyd is now part of that of the Oddlo Group, so that's one you'll recognise in the UK. We also seem to be the choice for opticians, and I know why. It's going to complex skew configuration. When you get into an optician, you're talking about different frames, different lenses. It's always dynamic skew creation, and it's something we're really, really strong at. So Mr. Specs is the biggest online optician in Europe. That goes alongside our, I know, an existing customer, Feelman, which is one of the, the one of the the, 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 kind of top, the top three bricks and mortar based opticians in, in Europe. So Excited by that one, it just demonstrates um, the power of kind of the configurability of, of, of products, all the way from kind of setup to to actual fulfillment and order orchestration. The um, the five, the final one I mentioned is a different a different one is it's organic, organic products. So it's Al Natura. Um, again, it, it based in the DAC region, which is our, our home market. Um, ma- massive range of items across their online and bricks and mortar stores, from homeware to kind of gro- grocery. So that's exciting. It's a multi category. Again, it demonstrates our strengths in kind of um, complex assortments. Is, is a really strong area for scale, so we, we're quite proud of that one. I won't main, I won't name the other ones. I don't want to go on forever. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just cut it off if you just start listing too many names. <laughs> um, excellent. Well, let's go on to the next question. That's really useful to get that kind of diversity. But, but strategic roadmap focus for the next quarter. This is what most ecom teams want to know. Where are you going? What are you focused on? So yeah, subscri- we're getting a lot of demand for subscriptions as 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 are other kind of technology providers. Some some will have to you know buy buy another license to another with another company that provides subscription management. We're building it into the platform as an add-on for customers that want to manage subscriptions. Um, we've also we had feedback on our search. We we the customers gave us a lot of really good um, feedback on how we could improve uh, improve our search functionality. So again, continuously developing that, and there's a lot of a lot of activity planned around search over the next few months um so that that i'm quite excited by um i mentioned promotions engines earlier and um, again that just again it continually um iterate on that functionality of the next few quarters and then the ongoing improvements in ui so we're when we demo to people retailers who actually operate the kind of online business the wow moment is always is always when they look at the software and they look at how it works and the workflows because it feels it's designed by a retailer for for retailers so we're just continuing to do some real um, enhancements to the user interface to make it again really lean to operate in quite complex businesses, right? These these are complex retailers that want to operate lean, so a lot of improvements there. I don't, again, I won't bore you by going through every single line item on the improvements, but but some 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 quite some quite uh, some good optimizations to make the businesses more lean. And then I guess the final one is um, we're we're um, there's, there's been a real, I mean, we're really expanding massively in the UK. Um, you can see that if you. Look at all the all the all the new hires we've made in the UK region, and and some exciting new Legos to come over the next few months. But also in the US, um, we've uh, we've now started hiring in the US. We've got already got a couple of people in the US, but growing growing our presence there. For those that go to Shop Talk in Vegas, that's that's uh, people on the on the flight there at the moment. Our, our Tarek, our, our one of our co-founders, is over on on the flight right now. Actually, I think, um, but. But yeah, shop, shop, so shop tour. We're at NRF in January, so people in the US will start to see us more and more now as we as we start to um, help businesses over there that kind of got have that enterprise complexity. So yeah, that that's in a nutshell kind of what what kind of the, the strategic focus of the next perhaps the next quarter. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, and if anyone wants to to drill into some of these capabilities um, anymore, because subscription definitely creates it's a massive focus area for a lot of businesses on. That kind of AOV and LTV play, or the advanced promotions, where a lot of people get frustrated with the limitations you have in platforms. Um, how can they connect directly so they they can get information direct from the right people? Yeah, the best way is just email me directly, um, um, or LinkedIn. So, so 
the, my email address is craig.smith at scale.com. So pretty easy to remember. Um, and, and also, yes, yeah, LinkedIn. Um, they're, they're the best ways, I would say. But also, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm based, based in London. So people want to meet up for a coffee, want to, want to understand more than, more, more than happy to do that as well. Magic. Well, look, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll be doing this again in the next quarter. Take care, Craig. Thank you, James. Okay, so let's now chat to Shopify, um, who've been rapidly acquiring new SME and enterprise brands and driving the product roadmap with an annual R&D in excess of $1 billion. So lots of exciting things have been happening. And a warm welcome to Emily Benoit Verde, who's the director at MIA Partnerships. How are you, Emily? Hi, I'm great, James. Uh, happy to be here today. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, let's crack on because I love asking these questions to all the vendors. So let's start with um, what major new features, improvements have been released in the least quarter? Like what, what are the most exciting things you want to tell people about? So as you may know, Shopify every six months has called Shopify Editions, where we release over 100 new uh, product features. And for our last editions, we focused really on the foundations and the fundamentals um, to work on the reliability of our infrastructure and also uh, to focus on the speed go-to-market that we enable. And we had really four key areas that uh, were very important in this edition's edition specifically. The first one is extensibility. Uh, we know that today customizability is really key for big merchants, the ability to customize, let's say it this way. So we really added an extra set of APIs that allow, allow no merchants to uh, extend Shopify's checkout and uh, allow enterprise to build exactly how they want. The second one is B2B. Uh, B2B sales are really the biggest commerce opportunity for 2024, and we invest, invested heavily in world-class B2B features uh, directly into Shopify's core products to support, you know, uh, sales rep permissions, B2B discount and headless also for B2B merchants. The third one is retail. We're making big investments in retail at Shopify to provide this really truly unified commerce solutions. And we have our new POS terminal with the tap, uh, cheap and swipe payments options. And the first one is AI. We integrated our AI suite, Shopify Magic, to our entire platform to keep enterprise on the cutting edge of technology. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not surprised to see AI pulled out. I think that's, that's fast becoming actually probably a challenge for, for vendors because the expectations are that you provide those tools rather than others. So yeah, interesting to see the focus there. Um, so let's talk about the next bit that I think is really of interest is, is like key launches or new wins. Do you want to talk through some of the, like the, the, um, uh, the brands that have been onboarded in the last quarter? Sure, James. So as you know, uh, some of the biggest brands in the world are migrating to Shopify at the moment. Uh, we were named a leader in commerce innovation by IDC Marketscape Report. And we've been partnering with a lot of the major enterprises who are looking for scale, flexibility, and optionality. I will mention to you three names of brands that I've uh, joined Shopify recently. The first one is London uh, Clothes Label Bowden, uh, our largest uh, deal in the UK in history. The second one is a German created home and living company West Wing. And the third one is on running the Swiss athletic sports company that has taken over footwear by storm. Currently, 27% of our merchant base is based in EMEA. It's been the fastest growing region. So, That's interesting. And it's really interesting to hear you pull out, say, like B2B is, is going to be a big focus area because I'm definitely seeing that actually as a growth area in terms of the level of interest in investment in, the, in e-commerce infrastructure. So... Um, it's interesting to hear that that's a key focus area for Shopify as well at the moment. Um, I, I, let's have a look at the forward facing on this. Where Where's Shopify headed in the next quarter? Strategically, what, what's your focus at the moment around the product? So from an enterprise uh, perspective, there are a few areas that I want to deep dive on that we're focusing on uh, at the moment. So we know that historically, a lot of uh, enterprise businesses have been held back by their commerce infrastructure in terms of, you know, agility of innovation or scale. So um, if I was to put forward three main topics that we're like um, focusing on right now, I would say innovation, um, 
to really put back speed and performance at the heart heart of the operations of those merchants. This is what they're looking for. This is what they're asking right now. They are also asking very much so, you know, to work on their total cost of ownership. This is what they demand. They demand lower implementation costs and, you know, lower operating costs. So it's also a big focus for us. And speed, as always, it's always been a big dem demand of merchants. Uh, but it's also spilled to be able to have optionality and flexibility so that they gain on velocity across their full stack. So they're able to deploy faster. They're able to pivot faster. They're able to experiment faster. Yeah, I really like the way that's being framed, actually, because it's not just about a site being fast for the customer. It's about the business teams as well, having the, the tooling so that they can work more effectively. And that's often where the issue's been in the past is, is the time it takes to get anything done on the platform. So, yeah, nice to hear there's more focus on that as well. Um, excellent. Well, uh, that, those are our three questions. This is our nice, short, sharp update with our vendors. So, Emily, thank you very much for, for taking time. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out to, to um, somebody at Shopify to discuss any of these areas in more detail, how, how do they reach out? Because Shopify is such a big business. Now. Like how, do, how do people connect? So it depends if you're, um, let's say, a partner, a solution partner that wants to partner more with us. You know, this is what I'm in charge of, our ecosystem of partner in the region. So they can uh, reach to our partnerships team. I think probably the easiest way to find them would be on LinkedIn, I think, at this moment in time. So they were broken down in every market in the in the, the region. And then for any prospect merchants who wants to engage with us, you can go on our main website, our enterprise new website that actually that launched and just submit a contact us form and our sales team will be right there with you. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time um, and look forward to seeing what comes next from Shopify. Thanks, James. I was really happy to be here. Thank you. You're listening to the Inside Commerce podcast hosted by experienced consultants James Gerd and Paul Rogers. Inside Commerce is your fast track to digital knowledge, featuring interviews with leading e-commerce retailers, industry thought leaders, and the C-suite of key tech companies to explore the latest in digital strategy, customer experience, and tech. Discover what the latest trends really mean and get practical advice based on experience to help fine-tune your e-commerce strategy and tech stack. Follow us on LinkedIn and reach out to James or Paul if you'd like to discuss an e-commerce project. We hope you enjoy the latest episode.